How many of you are familiar here? Can I see a show of hands? How many of you are familiar with Prime Infrastructure? Have you been using that in your environment today? Looking at it. Maybe. But you're familiar with it. OK. Any other people who are familiar, are you using it in your environment today? All right. My name is Soumya Satanathan. I'm one of the product managers for Prime Infrastructure. I basically manage several features within Prime Infra, including monitoring capabilities, you know, and also my primary focus is around data center. Um, Prime has been there for almost, um, I would say, seven, eight odd years. We started off with more wireless management and then added wired capabilities and on top of it, now we're doing data center. With me here, we have Spencer Zier. Why don't you introduce yourself, Spencer? Uh, hi, I'm a... Yeah, you can talk. Microphone on? Yes, he'll, he'll make it. Okay. I'm the uh, uh, lead engineer for our API. Uh, sorry, one. Yeah, is it? Yeah, it's coming. All right, let me try now. Excellent. I'm the uh, lead engineer for our APIs. I'm just, you know, today's session, I'm just going to give a high level introduction of what Prime Infrastructure as a tool could do, you know, in your uh, network, you know, just a key use cases that I would walk through. And then we'll dwell into more of what Prime REST API resources that are available, you know, what could you automate, what are people doing today with Prime REST APIs. And then we'll have it more like an inter interactive session. We can take up questions based on uh, your interest levels. Is that okay? All right. So quick introduction to uh, Prime Infra. What can Prime do today? Um, Prime has a wealth of uh, knowledge. As I said, we started off as a wireless management tool. We can understand who's connected to the network, wired, wireless users connected to the network, and how they're connected you know, through APs, through switches, you know, to routers all the way through, you know, the van, vanage, and to the data center, within the data center into the Nexus platforms, and also the compute elements, virtual elements on top of it. So we have breadth of information from a user all the way through the application, from branch campus all the way through the uh, data center. So these are all the data that Prime collects, you know, based on discovery, you know, we have automated discovery mechanisms to be able to you know, look into all the data, like configure these devices, monitor these devices through SNMPs, you know, make sure your health is, network health is doing okay, make sure the branches are up and running, fine, doing okay. And we collect these based on different instrumentations, you know, that are available on the routers. So we see here, we can, you know, we can onboard a new device that comes onto the network, you know, that is what we can do through plug and play, basically. You know, anyone who connects a device into the network, we can make sure the device can call back to prime infrastructure, get its configs, get its images, you know, download, make sure it's up and running. And from then on, we can do day and monitoring of uh, the devices, configure them, do a config archive, you know, make sure your network is doing okay and you have visibility end to end from a management uh, point of view. So a couple of bit more information with respect to configuration, we can do specific things. We have templates. So primary goal for, you know, I'll probably move over to the next slide, which is, you know, goals for prime infrastructure and what we're doing towards that. So the primary goal is simplicity and automation. What we do is we have template-based mechanisms to be able to configure the devices. These templates are cookie cutter templates, you know, that you could install, you know, that you can configure on a Catalyst or iOS devices. And, you know, the same thing could be configured on an Access device. So you want to roll out a VLAN, for instance, on your Catalyst devices. The same template can be used across your enterprise. You know, you can do that the same, you know, same way on your Nexus platforms as well. So, you know, as I said, it's a breadth of information that we have, and we could do the same thing on many platforms that Cisco supports today. The second one, second biggest thing is application user and application-centric data. At the end of it, every organization, IT organization is concerned about if I'm able to 
have my applications delivered to my users at an you know um, standard quality way. Like you know, you should not be able to have performance issues. You make sure the application is delivered with an SLA. Our users, user experience, end-to-end -end user experience is good when you're, when you're trying to access an application. And all of these data you know, resides within Prime. Most of our customers today, in fact, we have very large retail customers that you can think of using Prime infrastructure, who's using PI as a headless system, Prime infrastructure as a headless system, completely relying on REST APIs to be able to configure them, to be able to spin up a new uh, Prime instance to, you know, in their data center because they're growing, you know, every every uh, quarter, every uh, every year, and so on. So they are able to spin up new uh, because we have a um, VM-based environment. We we can run on a VM-based environment, and we also have a hard appliance. But you know, they can just spin up a new prime instance as they grow, and they can start monitoring their additional uh, network infrastructure. You know, um, as they go. The last, you know, key goal here is to be able to integrate with the ecosystem, make sure we are part of their, you know, IT tools. Make sure we have a good integration with their IT tools, so they can have an end-to-end -end troubleshooting, end-to-end -end visibility, if they have other tools in their environment. We, we are predominantly Cisco um, specific management tool. We do uh, look at third-party devices. We, we can manage third-party devices to an extent, but we are predominantly, significantly you know, looking into uh, Cisco devices. And so we have you know, customers who are using third-party devices, third-party tools, using other applications in their environment. And you know, they've asked us if we could integrate with their tool to have a single pane of glass view. We could do that through REST APIs. All right, so I spoke about it at a high level, but you know, specifically around key capabilities of prime infrastructure, that is what the slides, uh, the slides talk about. Um, as I said, discovery is based on you know, automatically being able to uh, look at what's on your network. Uh, we can do a config archive, basically look at anything that's changed on the device, who changed, what time did they change that, in you know, all these aspects. Uh, we could do um, config pushes, as I said, it's cookie cutter, template-based config pushes that can go on the devices. Uh, software image upgrades, Cisco recommends software image upgrades, software images that can go on specific device platforms, and we can you know, download the software images through our prime infrastructure. Not all of these are available through REST APIs. I want to be upfront and honest about it. There are a lot of different use cases that I'm going to talk about in the next couple of slides. Uh, which will you know, uh, help you understand how you can automate these processes in your environment, how you can make use of prime infrastructure, uh, REST resources to be able to automate it end to end. Uh, around network operations, it's basically being able to, you know, prime collects a lot of data. How do I visualize this data in a meaningful fashion, right? You, know, you may have multiple branches in your uh, organization. You may have multiple branches managing them all through prime infrastructure. You know, Prime knows everything about the devices, but how do you meaningfully understand that your site is doing well? For all you know, you don't care about every single device in an environment. You care about probably um, how my particular branch is doing, how my corporate office is doing, how my headquarters is doing, right? So you know, we could organize these data within Prime infrastructure into groups, uh, you know, dynamic as well as static groups. You can group them into sites. You can group them into pods if you're looking into data center. And you know, all these data could be available outside of uh, Prime through REST APIs. You, know, you, know, you, you could give the group context and get the details of all the devices that are pertaining to group. You can add them uh, to a group. Make sure you can visualize them on our topology uh, you know, in terms of how your sites are doing. You know, in the, top, the, the picture there actually shows you how uh, each sites are doing, how they're connected, and if they're you know, having any specific issues. Uh, around the compliance, so basically, um, I know large enterprise organizations uh, have different kind of policies in their environment. Um, one of those, for example, could be I need to standardize all my configurations across the different platforms. All my switches need to be running these kind of configurations. All my routers need to have this enabled, you know, particular technology enabled uh, on, you know, on the routers. 
So these are some kind of industry, well, you cannot call it industry, but you know, particular organization specific policies. We can have um, prime, have, you know, you can define the policies on prime and run that against uh, your set of devices to be able to see which of the devices are compliant, which of the devices are not compliant. So that is a capability that we have. In addition to that, you would also be able to see if there are images that your devices are running which uh, have PSERT issues on them. You know, you don't want to have an image that is compromised in your environment. You can run that as reports. And you can have um, a list of all your devices that are end of, si end of sale, end of uh, life. Devices, uh, hardware devices as well as software images that are end of life or end of sale that, you know, you can run as a report on prime infrastructure. And good thing about reports is that all the report data, you can schedule the reports on prime infrastructure. All the report data are available through REST APIs as well. So how do we get the data out of prime infrastructure is through, you know, by scheduling the report uh, and getting the data out of uh, prime infrastructure through REST APIs. All right, so what, what, what does all of these mean? You know, to have complete network visibility to have a faster and accurate solution. That's the goal, that's the aim of uh, Prime Infrastructure doing so many uh, different things you know, in the same platform. So with that, probably um, key use cases that you can automate end-to-end -end with uh, REST APIs. I'm just going to touch upon a few use cases. It doesn't mean only these three use cases are available with Prime Infrastructure. You can definitely try out our DevNet Learning Lab. Spencer has been manning the um, you know, and, and helping with the questions. So you can basically run uh, and understand what, what other resources that are available uh, so you can try it out. So uh, around uh, onboarding devices onto your network management. So you might have contractors come in and connect your devices in different branches. You may not be able to like, travel to every single branch, connect your device. So once the devices are connected, you want to probably you know, automatically manage them through prime infrastructure. You don't have to sit in front of the GUI, run a discovery mechanism, or you don't have to sit in front of the GUI and import a device into the system. What you could do is, you know, we have a large, again, large retail organization, basically using REST APIs to be able to import, it, import the devices at the end of the day because he knows there are a bunch of devices that are going to be connected every now and then. So at the end of the day, all those list of devices that were added to the network is automated, automatically added into Prime Infrastructure, onboarded into Prime Infrastructure, and you know, managed in Prime automatically. So that is you know, the REST resource. I've given a pointer to the REST resource that could, be, uh, that could help you to import a device. And you can also basically add them into groups. So we have REST resources that could help you to say, you know, select a bunch of, create a group, select a bunch of devices, add them to the group. So you can visualize this particular, once let's say you have 10 devices that are getting added, 10 switches that are getting added to branch A. And you can add these 10 devices once they're managed into prime infrastructure uh, and add them into the groups, all automatically, all programmatically through the uh, REST APIs. And lastly, you want to be able to probably integrate with uh, CMDB uh, application that you may have. So you want to run uh, a list of all the assets that you have. You want to be able to get uh, in the inventory details, the physical inventory, logical inventory of every single device that you have in your network, and be able to integrate that those kind of details with your CMDB uh, sort of application, you know, database, right? So you can do. Um, you know, once the devices are managed, inventory collection happens automatically. All the inventory data can be um, taken out of uh, PI, you know, exposed out through the PI, uh, through the REST APIs. That makes sense? All right. Um, the second use case, primarily around, so how I divided the use cases is basically um, management, lifecycle management, uh, onboarding of devices, the process of onboarding of devices, then secondly around basically the day zero task, secondly around you know pushing configs, that is more of being able to enable a service, being able to enable a wireless service and so on, that is the second use case. And the third one uh, being day end monitoring. And what could you do 
uh, with uh, rest resources around these three use cases. So with respect to configuration, we have a whole bunch of rewrite APIs, resources that are available on prime infrastructure. Uh, you can you know, basically create a WLAN template um, uh, you know, through REST APIs, get a list of all the WLAN templates that are available out of the box on the system, um, get the particular WLAN template that you're interested in, create an AP group, and then apply the template to the AP group, and then deploy it on the WLAN controllers. And lastly, you know, this is all done through the job um, you know, mechanism, so you can look at if the job has succeeded or failed from the REST API. So all of these could be just with REST APIs that you could you know, schedule and come up with a new SSID. I mean, like, you know, uh, have a new SSID that's running on a particular branch, right? So these are you know, more around the configuration aspects that we have that you, know, you could use the REST APIs uh, for. Um, so I mean, again, you know, specifically looking at you want to come up with a segment uh, that you know, that, that has one, a particular SSID, and you want to be able to onboard that new SSID onto the, all, all the APs in that particular branch. So <clears throat> this is around that. And OK. So I did have a slide. I don't think uh, it, it's here. But you know, the last use case was around more of monitoring. Let's say you have been thinking about coming up with a, a dashboard on your own. So you are, you know, probably your organization has um, homegrown dashboard. We want to be able to see at any given point in time how many devices are up and running, how many devices are ICMP reachable, SNMP reachable. That way you don't want to make sure, you know, you want to make sure that your devices are doing okay, right? So, you know, we could, we could use our REST APIs to be able to get the reachability status of all your devices in your network, get, get the reachability of all your devices in a group. And that way, you can populate your own homegrown uh, dashboards or a third-party application with, you know, this is the status of a network at any given point in time. For all you know, not all customers like the UI representation of every tool. So you might want to have your own representation with red, green bulbs, you know, that your your executives might be interested in. So that is something that you can do as well with uh, Prime uh, Infra REST APIs. Uh, lastly, how do we get access to these APIs? Um, so there are a whole bunch of information that are available. So perhaps you want to completely automate your process. You, you are using a lot of resources that are available in REST APIs. You want to make sure the system is not going down. So we have different uh, kind of um, you know, API health indexes that are available uh, that you might you know, check out to be able to see that you know, the API, um, uh, the, the system health is doing OK uh, based on the queries that you're uh, you know, having on the REST APIs. Uh, apart from that, you know, we can do rate limiting as well. So you are integrating with multiple tools. You don't want to be uh, bombarding the system with too many queries. You want to be able to rate limit uh, that so that you, know, you don't bring down the system, or the other tools do not bring down your system. It's extensible. We are adding more and more of resources onto REST APIs uh, to be able to integrate around you know, other aspects, as well integrate around compute aspects, more of automating around compute uh, around in the data center, the VM workload movements, and also getting more and more of uh, top-end reports out of, uh, out of uh, prime infrastructure. So this is. Uh, probably the last slide, and I'll, I'll open up for questions. Um, you can access the REST resources documentation. There's clear documentation that are available as to what resources we have around REST APIs in prime infrastructure. Um, you can access that from the tool if you already have it up and running, or we are already on the DevNet portal. Uh, so you can take a look at prime infrastructure, search for prime infra on the DevNet portal you should be able to access all the REST resources that are available on prime infrastructure from there as well. So you can get a sense of what is it that you need, and if you are having you know, support for all the specific resources from, uh, uh, from REST URL point of view. And then, you know, as I said, we have both read and write APIs. We have access to all the reports that can get out of the, uh, out of the system and so on. And um, we've been having. You know, a lot of uh, people trying out our uh, you know, uh, PI booth in the DevNet zone as well. So we'll definitely like if you can you know, give it a try and then let us know how uh, 
you know, let us know your feedback as well. Um, so that was pretty much my end of the session. Spencer, you want to add something? So yeah, any questions that you guys have specifically? I mean, I wanted to make sure I give you a quick introduction of what Prime can do, because this is the first year that we are on DevNet. I wanted to make sure people understand you know, the capabilities of Prime and what uh, resources that we have um, that are available on the product to be able to you know, use. So please you know, let me know if you have any questions. We'll be around for you know, quite some time. You can reach out to us uh, offline as well. Anything specifically no, we want to know about the use cases that Prime supports? Was it, was it okay? I mean, did you get what you wanted? All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Please do take the online evaluation so we know if you have any feedback. Thanks.